everybody, this is part two of the In the Mind of a Lost Lion, a Hawks ex listener fan fiction by Hawks Horror underscore on Wattpad. I hope you all enjoy. Um, trigger warning, mentions of suicide, and bad self talk. Click off the video. Click off the video if this triggers you, please. I don't want any of you to get hurt. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't, in the first part, you might have cried. In the second part, I don't know yet because I haven't read it. So, we're going to be reading it together. So, let's get into it. Days go by, and you do the same thing every day. Get up, eat, put dishes in the sink, then go back to bed. You didn't shower often, instead laying in bed just looking out the window or sleeping. After a couple of days, you notice you were running out of food. You and Kago would usually buy groceries together every week, but now he wasn't there to go with you. You stayed eating just microwavable foods. Days go by, and you do the same thing every day. Get up, eat, put dishes in the sink, then go back to bed. You didn't shower often, instead laying in bed and just looking out the window or sleeping. After a couple of days, you notice you were running out of food. You and Kago would usually buy groceries together every week, but now he wasn't there to go with you. You stayed eating just microwavable foods. Didn't really matter though, you didn't eat much anyway. One day, you decided to get on the rooftop of your apartment to get some fresh air. So you headed up there. The sun was going down. The sky was filled with purples, pinks, yellows, and reds. It was such a beautiful view. And then suddenly, you felt at peace. It was so quiet and calm and comforting at the rooftop. You watched as the sun went down and the colors in the sky started to blend together. The sky was like a canvas that was being painted as the minutes went by. Then, once the sun was almost fully gone, and as it started to get darker, that moment of peace was gone. Now you realize what had happened, what you did, who you lost, what you said. Oh God, what did I do? How could I fuck things up again? You stand on the edge of the rooftop, feeling numb, feeling defeated. You looked up at the stars. They were so beautiful and bright, almost as bright as his smile. Almost as bright as his face lights up when you both go out together. Almost as bright as he was in your life. He was the star in my pitch dark of a life. You didn't care anymore. You had ruined the one good thing in your life. Now there was no other reason to live or to even try anymore because you had fucked it all up. You looked up at the stars one last time and thought to yourself, what a nice view to see. I'm glad I got to see the beautiful night sky one last time. You walked off the edge, feeling numb and lost. You felt as though you'd finally get over the forever peace you had been looking for. But suddenly, you felt like you were being held, like if someone had caught you. You're open to your eyes to see that Kago was someone holding you. Your eyes filled with tears as he flies you both back onto the rooftop. After you get there, he puts you down and grabs you by the shoulders. What were you thinking? Are you serious, Ryan? Did you just try to kill yourself? For what? What good would that do? Jesus, Ryan. You can't just fucking decide to do things like that. You can't just decide to leave my life like that. You didn't know what to say. You still had that numb feeling, but before you could decide how to respond, he pulled you forward and held you. He held you so tight. That's when you realized what you had just tried to do. You realized how traumatizing it must have been for him to see you falling from the rooftop. You just started apologizing to him over and over. I'm sorry, Kate. Go. I wasn't thinking straight. I just felt so lost. I'm sorry I didn't mean to scare you like that. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Kago. I know, kid. I just don't ever want to imagine that image of you anymore. You falling from the rooftop. It hurts to think about. 
You don't know how fast my heart dropped when I saw you. I'm just glad I'm able to hold you in my arms again. Me too. I'm glad I'm able to be in your arms again. You both kind of just stand there holding each other for a while. You don't remember how long you were outside. You didn't care because all that mattered is that you were once again in Keigo's arms. After a bit, you both get way too cold and decide to head inside your apartment. Once you both walk in, Keigo decides to mention the very obvious amount of dishes piling up in the sink and the number of empty cases of microwavable foods. Jesus, kid, when was the last time you cleaned up around here? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of forgot to. Okay, how about this? You head into the bedroom and lay in bed, which I'm sure isn't even done. And I'll head there in a bit, okay? Okay, you smile. You don't know how much I miss that smile of yours. I can't. Hawks pauses in the middle of his sentence. He decided not to finish his sentence. You asked him what he was going to say, but he says that it was nothing and to forget about it. But you knew what he was going to say. He was going to say how he couldn't believe he was almost never going to see your smile of yours again. But you get it, why he didn't say it. He didn't want to upset you or remind you of what you had almost succeeded in. You head to your bedroom like he said and laid in bed. You thought to yourself, wow, I can't believe I was going to leave this bed behind. You kind of laughed to yourself, of course. It wasn't something to laugh or joke about, but that's just how you learn to cope with things. You could hear Kago washing the dishes and cleaning up the island in the kitchen. You would always eat standing on the island. You didn't even take the energy to move to the dining room table. After a bit, you heard Kago making his way to your bedroom. You had been laying sideways, looking out the window. You had tried to imagine what you must have looked like falling off the side of the building. You wondered if someone could have seen you falling, if you were falling too fast to the point where it just looked like a shadow. You were thinking all this crazy things while Kago was just standing beside your bed. He finally decided to sit down, and he caught your attention. What are you thinking about, lovebird? Nothing, just kind of zoned off for a bit. Okay, well, I think we should get some sleep since a lot of things happened today. You're going to stay here? Of course, I want to make sure you're okay. I'm never leaving your side again, Feather. I love you. I love you too, too Bird Brain. You both fell asleep, him embracing you in his arms. You felt safe. You're glad he was there to catch you because if he hadn't, there's a chance you could have never been in his arms again. Kind of horrible to say, right? But you were glad you didn't succeed. You were glad you had your big dork right by your side again. You no longer felt lost because Kago had found you once again, so life couldn't be better now. And that was the end of the fan fiction. Um, in the description, there's going to be a suicide for veteran helpline, and there's also going to be petitions to, if you are 18 years or older, please sign them if you can, to just make the world a better place. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time. Bye!